According to the Bank for International Settlements (BIS), for the first half of 2019, the total notional amounts outstanding for contracts in the derivatives market was an estimated 640 trillion dollars. Now, derivative is just a big word created by Wall Street to simply mean a financial security with a value that is reliant upon or derived from an underlying asset or group of assets. In other words, it's trading a thing that represents the price movements of another thing. Now, the most common underlying assets for derivatives are stocks, bonds, commodities, currencies, interest rates, and market indexes. So if derivatives simply require two or more parties to transact based on the price of an asset, well, DeFi has all the money Legos it requires to rebuild the derivatives market, but in a permissionless, trustless, peer-to-peer -peer manner. In other words, better. The most well-known name to pioneer derivatives trading in DeFi is Synthetix. Now, launched in late 2018, Synthetix aims to be the backbone for derivatives trading in DeFi, allowing anyone, anywhere, to gain on-chain exposure to a vast range of assets. But what does that mean? Well, Synthetix enables traders in DeFi to trade synths, which are over-collateralized derivatives of commodities like oil and gold, equities and indices like the FTSE 100 and Nikkei 225, Forex like JPY, CHF, Euros and Aussie dollars, and cryptocurrencies including those not on Ethereum like BNB, XRP, and yes, even our old friend TRX. Tron! You can go long or short with any of these asset classes, but what Synthetix is working to enable is much, much bigger. Imagine connecting your Ethereum wallet in one click and then you suddenly have access to trading Google or Apple stocks. What was once considered a fantasy where stock markets would be rebuilt on blockchains is now here. It's being accelerated by the reality that DeFi may just provide an alternative to the New York Stock Exchange, the Dow Jones, and more. Now, this might sound simple to those of us who have access to trading platforms already with these stocks, but for many across the globe, the ability to gain exposure to genuine blue chip stocks and asset classes would actually be life-changing. And we won't have time to cover it today, but another notable project enabling DeFi developers to build synthetic assets is UMA, or Universal Market Access. And you can check them out at umaproject.org. When you hear the term trading options, this might happen. And you're not alone, because you know most of us have never traded options, but it doesn't change the fact that they are one of the most popular financial instruments in the world with an estimated 15.23 billion options contracts traded in 2019. Now DeFi is about leveling the playing field and making the black box that is traditional finance into a transparent peer-to-peer -peer model accessible to anyone with an Ethereum wallet or your choice of layer one. Options is yet another money Lego, growing like bananas or rabbits on Ethereum, with just under $100 million in total value locked in decentralized options like Hedgic and growing liquidity in Open, which recently launched their V2. Hedgic is an on-chain options trading protocol on Ethereum where you can buy WBTC and ETH call or put options. And you can also sell calls or puts as a liquidity provider or LP on Hedgic. Now here's a quick lesson on options. An option is a contract that gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation, to buy, in the case of a call option contract, or sell, in the case of a put option contract, the underlying asset at a specific price on or before a certain date. And options are known as derivatives because they derive their value from an underlying asset. So why do traders use on-chain options? Well, it's mainly for either speculation or to hedge their positions. And what separates on-chain options in DeFi on Ethereum from traditional finance? Well, in the case of Hedgic, these decentralized on-chain options are non-custodial, meaning no one takes custody of your assets, which we should be familiar with now in DeFi. There's 24 seven global trading, which is par for the course in DeFi and crypto, but different from traditional finance. It's verified on-chain settlement of each option contract. It's exercisable at any moment during the period of holding a contract and exercising is guaranteed by the liquidity locked on an option contract. And it's censorship resistant without KYC email or registration required. The key takeaway here is that aside from lending, borrowing, trading, derivatives, insurance, perpetual futures, we now have yet another financial behemoth use case for DeFi. 
which can be rebuilt to be more accessible, more transparent, and more capital efficient with non-custodial on-chain options on Ethereum. And it's part of an open source software revolution in DeFi, which is happening slowly at first, but then all at once to replace legacy finance. And best of all, it means powerful financial instruments are becoming accessible to all with a simple Ethereum wallet versus a few who have the right to trade on Wall Street. As more apps and protocols launch and more money pours into DeFi, it's important that DeFi investors can mitigate the risk of losing their funds. And if you've seen all the hacks that happened last year, well, this is important. With great power comes great responsibility. Now, one of the most common financial insurance you've probably used in your everyday life is insurance. Do you drive a car without insurance? Do you own a home without insurance? If you have little ones, do you risk everything without life insurance? My point is insurance is what protects us from the unexpected. And there's nothing more obvious to expect but the unexpected in DeFi. As we've covered on this channel before, while DeFi in 2020 exploded in growth, it also imploded at times from rug pulls, flash loan exploits, and smart contract bugs. And if you consider that humans code smart contracts which power DeFi applications, and humans audit this code for bugs, it is in fact humans that we rely upon to avoid failures in the code, which failures could lose millions, and potentially this year billions, in funds. So unless humans can attain perfection, which few of us can, unless we're talking about our robot overlords and AI's future, ooh, let's not go there, then we can assume we'll continue to run into smart contract bugs and loopholes. It's just the way it is. With over $16 billion in funds at risk in DeFi and lots more money coming, one of the most successful DeFi projects with over $150 million in total value locked and one that's been leading the quest to provide DeFi insurance is Nexus Mutual. Nexus is a people-powered alternative to insurance built with smart contracts on Ethereum. Now think back to 2016 and imagine if Nexus had existed then during the famous DAO hack, which lost 3.6 million ETH or $3.4 billion based on today's ETH price, which is near $900. Although today I think it went past $1,000. And we've come a long way since then. And now Nexus Mutual offers a product called Smart Contract Cover, which allows you to pay as little as 2.6% annually for protection against a smart contract bug, which guarantees a payout in ETH or DAI if a smart contract bug is ever discovered in the DeFi app. Now you can buy insurance policies for payouts in ETH or DAI, and you can buy this Nexus protection for minimally 30 days or up to a year or more in length by paying the premium in ETH or NXM, their native token. Since their launch in July 2019, Nexus has grown remarkably to over 162,000 ETH in the mutual capital pool over 13X in just 2020, with under $75 million in active insurance coverage. What's radical about this is it's only the start of DeFi insurance. Recently, Nexus became the first DeFi insurance team to offer protections for funds deposited in centralized finance or CeFi services like custodial crypto lending at BlockFi and Celsius. Nexus and other new players in DeFi insurance have begun extending one another smart contracts insurance, which resembles reinsurance, a practice in the legacy insurance world where insurers transfer portions of their risk portfolios to other parties. Nexus has even laid out in its mission to extend coverage to legacy risk vectors like earthquake or flood insurance. The key takeaway here is you can imagine DeFi insurance will become as much a standard as driving with car insurance. And as Nexus and other new players in this DeFi insurance vertical offer more comprehensive insurance to protect against any sort of exploit or loss of funds, it enables DeFi as a whole to grow. If more know they can depend on this kind of protection against the unexpected, it's likely more will get started investing their money in such smart contract powered DeFi apps on Ethereum. And that, ladies and gentlemen, means mass adoption of DeFi is coming. You've been watching DeFi 101. Do be sure and check out the other videos in this series and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the new videos as they drop. And above all, stay safe out there.